So the next section that we're looking at is uh, stroke volume, but fundamentally we're talking about Venus return and Stalin's law. Simply put, the stroke volume is our heart's ability to fill and also empty. So the greater the ability to fill and empty, the greater the stroke volume. So we'll have a look how that's going to work. One of the main reasons that we have an, uh, an increase in our stroke volume is because of our venous return. In other words, the ability of the heart to actually get the blood back into our heart. If we can fill our heart um, because we have a, a quality venous return, therefore we're going to have uh, a better stroke volume. In other words, each one of these chambers is going to be filled up with blood uh, as opposed to part filled if our venous return mechanisms aren't working. So we'll take a look at how that actually affects the heart. So the venous return, if we have a quality venous return, and we'll look at those mechanisms in a second or two, if we have that, then the filling capacity of the heart allows us to have a greater EDV, an endodiastolic volume. So if we have each one of the four chambers of the heart, the EDV is the, after the diastolic phase, so we have these ventricles filled with blood, ready to go, and that's because of our venous return. The heart's capacity to empty also depends on the quality of the CDV, but also the stretch of the heart walls, which is Stalin's law, and again we'll look at that in a second. So the greater the stretch and the greater the endodiastolic volume, the greater uh, the stroke volume is going to be. So we'll have a look at that. There are the five main ways that the venous return can be achieved, and these are the mechanisms that actually help it. Pocket valves, muscular pump, respiratory pump, smooth muscle, and gravity. We'll look at a few of those right now. So, first of all, we have our pocket valves, which are one-way valves in the veins that prevent the backflow. So, all that happens is, as the blood is in here, forced up into this stage here and the pocket valves stop it from returning going back down that way so therefore we can work against gravity so these are really really important if we don't have these then all we'll end up with is potentially blood pooling and a poor venous return therefore we don't have enough oxygen or oxygenated blood to be actually in the heart and the things that work in conjunction with this are our muscular pumps so, as our muscles are actually contracting, it massages and helps this effect of the blood being forced up against gravity. These work completely in conjunction, so as the muscles contract, these valves will open. As these muscles relax, which they do in this stage here, these valves will close, therefore stopping the backflow. If we don't have sufficient forcing of the blood back towards the heart, then we can end up with blood sitting in uh, small pockets within the veins. These pockets are known as uh, blood pooling, and these can actually reduce our venous return. And the effect is the same as we mentioned before. So how do we actually maintain that mechanism, which is really important? also linking this into physical activity, one thing that a lot of people don't do is an active cool down. So if we do this, we're maintaining that muscular pump, therefore this allows us to have enough blood going back to the heart straight after we've done loads of physical activity. So one of the scenarios that we looked at uh, within the lesson was this one. A cyclist completes an exhausting high intensity training session and then immediately stops. They climb off their bike, stand still, lean up against the wall whilst they're recovering. They feel lightheaded and then they faint. And we tried to work out why that was. So fundamentally one of the reasons is because we've stopped all of the mechanisms that are supporting our venous return. There are still of them that are in place, uh, for example smooth muscle, however the ones that are really really going to aid us, as we mentioned up here, are uh, the uh, skeletal muscle pump, also our respiratory pump as well. 
So this actually, uh, because of the uh, increase in our respiratory rate, also aids the venous return as well. So because we've literally stopped both of these, the blood is no longer going to uh, our brain because of the impact of gravity. Therefore, our body being the smart thing that it is, it faints. Bang, down you go. Therefore, we remove the problem of gravity. So we don't have to have a stronger venous return fighting against gravity there. If we're led down this way, clearly the blood is able to return to the brain and therefore we come round. So if anybody faints, that's usually what happens is we've had a stopper or a reduction in the amount of blood that's gone to the brain. And an active cool down is one of the ways that we can actually reduce that. So we did the exercise in class, we had a look at doing some uh, activities and then we recorded the results. So, one of the other aspects is Stalin's law. So with this, what we're actually talking about is the stretch mechanism that we mentioned before. It's the ventricle's ability to stretch further and enlarge. So the greater the endostyle uh, diastolic volume, the greater the walls of the heart stretch. So in other words, the greater the amount of blood that's actually going into the heart, the greater will stretch. And therefore, if we stretch further, we'll have a greater force of the ventricular contraction. So within our ventricles here, if this is expanded, expanded, filled with blood, then whoosh, a greater force is exerted, and therefore, uh, more blood is forced out. So we use the, uh, the idea of the balloon. If I just have that much blood, let's imagine this is the heart, if I have that much blood going back into my heart, then we will have quite a low stroke volume. There's not much blood being forced back in because of our venous return. Maybe our, our valves aren't working or we've stopped abruptly from exercise and we haven't got the same venous return. Therefore, our heart isn't actually filling up. So we've got a low EDV and we would maybe only have that much blood that gets forced out. Nice. However, if we force more blood back into the heart because of the quality of our venous return mechanisms, we have a greater stretch on the ventricular walls. Because there's a greater stretch, there will be a greater stroke volume. In other words, the force of the contractions from the ventricular walls. This, in turn, allows us to have a greater stroke volume. So, in essence, if we have a good venous return and the mechanisms are effective, then we'll have a greater endodiastolic volume. In other words, our ventricles, the diastolic phase is over. We finish that. The blood is now in the ventricles. And because of the stretch mechanism and the quality of the EDV, we now have a large force contraction and therefore a stroke volume uh, that's increased. 